Hi guys, today we're going to look at buying your first angle grinder and how to get started. Um, an angle grinder, sometimes called an abrasive wheel or a cut-off tool, um, is a particularly versatile piece of equipment. Um, you can cut, grind, sand, abrade material and they come in a range of sizes obviously. Um, but today what we're going to look at is uh, the sort of the four and a half to five inch grinder um, category. Now, the first thing you must um, decide is whether to go for corded or cordless. Um, generally speaking, the corded versions, which is, we say this fellow here, um, they're about 50% of the price of a cordless tool only. And generally speaking, they're about twice the power. Uh, from a, a very brief glance online, the cheapest uh, corded grinder I could find was about 50 euros, which is about 55 or 60 dollars for a 700 watt grinder. Now, obviously, um, corded requires uh, either an extension lead or access to power, so they, they're you know they, they are useful, but um, I would suggest that if you're starting out to go for a cordless one just in terms of flexibility and portability. Now, before we put the the corded one away i'll just show you the spec on that there now and what we can see is this is actually classed as 115 millimeter which is four and a half inch and then if we put that away uh, the cordless one we have here is classed as 125 millimeter which is five inch generally speaking the the most common discs you'll find cutting discs or grinding discs are either four and a half inch, which is 115 millimeter, or nine inch, which is 230 millimeter. Obviously the five inch grinder will take both five and four and a half inch discs, but obviously then not the other way around. Now, um, if I was to make a suggestion, I would say try and aim for a five inch grinder. And the reason being is that I started looking at the price of discs and so on and so forth. and one particular website I came across, the five inch discs were about 7% more expensive than the four and a half inch discs. But by my calculations, they had about 20% more material on them. So obviously there's a, a, a price advantage to be gleaned there if, if, if they're of a, a small price differential. Now, just for information's sake, when you are um, using a disc, you can only use it down to about 65 millimeters, you know, somewhere just about two and a half inches thereabouts, because what happens is that the head of the tool gets in the way then and you can only go down to a particular size. So just keep it in mind that uh, if you do come across two different grinders, one is four and a half inch and the other is five inch, and there isn't a huge price differential between them, uh, go for the five inch. It just leaves you that little bit more flexibility. From a, a power perspective, I would suggest going with the 18 volt systems. Um, I had a look online and of four manufacturers there, I came across a, a Ryobi 18 volt for 82 euros, which is about uh, somewhere under $90. Um, a Milwaukee 18 volt for 140 euros, about $150. A Dewalt uh, for 148 euros, about $160 and a Makita at 122 euros, which is about 130 or thereabouts dollars, all in the four and a half to five inch uh, range. So roughly speaking, 18 volt battery platform and a five inch capacity or 125 mil, um, it's, it's a good place to start. It'll give you great flexibility and great mobility as well. If you do find yourself doing a lot of cutting or grinding, then you can buy a, a mains power tool um, of the same size or whatever. Um, but I still reckon that the cordless tool will be an asset to you because you know, not always are you going to be within reach of uh, a power outlet. Now, in terms of um, battery capacity, now we, we said about uh, 18 volt systems, um, I would suggest that going for the four or five amp hour batteries because uh, angle grinders are a particularly power hungry tool. They require high torque and high speed so you're going to need more than one battery and again that the battery should be of a reasonable size up around the four or five amp hour mark now i did cover in a previous video there buying our first drill and i mentioned that the battery choice was particularly important when you start off buying tools this is a, an example of that whereby if your drill that you bought came with two batteries you can buy a bare body uh, grinder and you could use the existing batteries that you have so obviously the more tools you could use on a battery platform the better now, just going through the various parts of, of a grinder, 
you'll obviously have your battery at one end this particular one um, it's a variable speed switch there's a, a lockout there as well to, to stop you turning it on and off by accident and um, it comes with the spark guard here and generally speaking those spark guards are sort of a, a quick release mechanism I don't know whether you can see it in there uh, it just clips out and in and you can rotate it then depending the the second handle that's here can be removed and then put on the far side depending on whether you're left or right handed and um, so there isn't much to them all they effectively are as a motor with a switch at the end of the day now as regards um the discs or the tools that you're going to use with a grinder uh, i've laid out four here which are the most common ones you'll come across they're cutting wheels uh, a grinding wheel flat disc and a wire brush now you can also get a, a, a disc specially designed for taking sheets of sandpaper if you're looking to, to, to use sandpaper on wood. Now first on our list is cutting wheels. Um, generally speaking these are, are quite thin and we'll try and hold it up there so you can see it. Um, they range from one millimeter to three millimeter which is about 40 thousandths of an inch through to 120 thousandths of an inch. Um, the thinner the wheel uh, the, the smaller the cut requiring less power and that'll increase the speed of the cutting for you and um, one thing to note is that uh, these discs have an expiry date on them because in the manufacturing process effectively what they are is sort of a coarse particle uh, bonded onto a, in, into a disc shape and as time goes by that bonding or that matrix that holds all those particles together starts to break down and this 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 breakdown of the bonding can cause disc to increasingly shatter or you know cause you other problems like that now the way um all uh, abrasive discs work is that they uh, basically wear away the material that you're either cutting or grinding and you'll find that the disc does as well hopefully at a slower rate than the, the material that you're working on. So this don't last forever by any means and some manufacturers are better than the others. So um, what I might do is I might put a link in the description there for um, somebody who's done a comparison of different uh, abra abrasion wheels. Now, next on our list then is grinding wheels. And as I said there, these are much, much thicker. The, the generally range around the sort of the six millimeter or quarter inch mark and these are particularly good for um, doing heavy material removal like grinding down heavy rust welding joints and on occasion then making something fit where the initial measurement wasn't quite as exact as it should have been so sort of a, a measure once saw once and grind once type of operation and um, as I said a uh, heavy uh, material or aggressive material removal so if you're looking to only clean something up this is probably not the best disc for you because it's very easy to leave gouges or mark the material now roughly speaking these are uh, anywhere between two to three euros each depending on a manufacturer and um, it'll also tell you on it what it's designed for and um, whether it's steel aluminium whatever because there are specialist cutting discs cutting and grinding discs for aluminium and different metals and one point to note as well is that um, especially with the cutting discs is that um, I've seen some people use large cutting wheels or large cutting discs which have worn down so they can't be used on a big grinder and then putting them on a small grinder this is not advisable these small discs are designed to operate up around the 10 11 12,000 rpm mark whereas the large discs are only sort of manufactured to six or seven thousand rpm so if you put a six or seven thousand rpm disc on a 10 or twelve thousand rpm machine you're, you're 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 looking at sort of an increased likelihood of the disc shattering just something to keep in mind now next down on the list of uh, aggressiveness or whatever are what are called flap discs and effectively what these are is folded sheets of sandpaper mounted on a disc you can get these in different grades coarsenesses and different materials so um, what these are designed for is sort of lighter material removal um, and they're also very good at finishing off um, a piece of steel or a piece of metal um, prior to painting it they leave quite a smooth finish not as aggressive as the grinding wheel obviously now they do wear out quicker and they're also a little bit more expensive they operate up at around the three to four euro mark so you know three fifty dollars to four fifty dollars somewhere thereabouts so they do 
they do cost a little bit more. Now, last on our list then is a wire brush. Now, these wire brushes, they don't remove um, the base material as such, but they're very good for cleaning off old paint, rust, um, and other staining on material. Now, my recommendation with these is buy a smaller brush rather than a bigger one, because the bigger ones create quite a bit of vibration, especially as they start to wear and the brushes start to spread, and that vibration can uh, make them difficult to, con to control, and also it's quite tiring on the hands and wrists. And these cost anywhere between five and 10 euros or six to 12 dollars, depending on the size and the, the different weave of the wire. And one note to interest, or one note of interest as well, is that these mount directly onto the the spindle of the grinder itself, rather than using a clamping nut, which I'll cover in a second now. Okay. When it comes to mounting a disc or changing out a disc, uh, first thing we must note is that the discs are held on by a retention nut, and I'll just hold that up there now, right? And what we can see there with that retention nut is that there's a raised boss on one side of it and then the other side of it then is flat. And what that raised boss is for is using larger discs like grinding discs and that raised boss sits down inside the disc and provides a little bit more register. Very important to remember though that when you are using thinner discs that you use the flat side to make sure that um, that retention boss doesn't uh, bottom out and leave you with the loose disc. The last thing you want is a loose disc on a high speed grinder. Now, first thing we do is, uh, when we're changing the disc, is either unplug the tool or take out the battery. We do not want this coming on in the middle of changing it. So, all grinders will have some type of spindle lock on them, okay? And what that is, is there's a shaft coming out of the motor here going this way, and that spins the disc obviously, all right? But we can't loosen a disc when it's, or sorry, we can't take off uh, the spindle nut here when the disc is spinning. So here we, on top of it here, we have this black button and you'll find a similar design. It might be located at the back or a different side or whatever, but the principle remains the same. And what you do is you press that down, you turn the disc and you'll feel that button lock into place. When that button is locked into place, then the motor itself is locked off and we take what's called a pin wrench which came with the tool and the pin wrench then sits into the nut and it loosens the nut for you so we just loosen it off take it out and we can demount our old disc now we'll stick on another disc there and you will note as well that here there's a little um register there for the disc to sit on so the disc sits on that there uh, because this is a cutting disc we're going to use the flat side of our nut not the raised side so the flat nut in to provide clamping force we turn that down and tighten it and then we take our pin wrench again and we tighten that as tight as we can so that's our, our disc change now one small item to note as well is that when it comes to cutting discs they should not be used for grinding or this type of motion. They're designed for cutting down this way and not designed for lateral motion or exerting pressure down that way because the disc will crack. They're much, much lighter than normal grinding discs or the heavier grinding discs. Now, uh, it wouldn't be an angle grinder video unless I covered off some few points of uh, safety. Um, they're aggressive machines. They throw an awful lot of sparks, debris, chips of metal etc etc and trust me now a chip of steel in the eye makes for a bad day and it's exactly as your mother said when she said it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye i'd suggest wearing a full face shield not just glasses because stuff can get up underneath glasses use a full face shield it'll keep you cleaner and it'll keep you safer and keep that in the same place as you keep the grinder so when you're grabbing one you'll grab the other also stick on earmuffs or some type of ear protection they're loud machines and lastly i'd say keep in mind as well where the stream of sparks off the grinder is going it is possible to set yourself on fire because a concentrated stream of sparks uh, against clothing can light them and uh, it happened to a friend of mine so learn from that now hopefully that's it and um, if you have any questions stick them in the comments down there and i'll do my best to answer them and if i can't i'll find somebody who can okay talk to you later